Galwr aelodau i drefn ar eitem gyntaf yn y gendan i'r prynawn yma i yw'r cwestiynau i'r prif wynidog, a mae'r cwestiwn cyntaf gan Llyr Griffith. Diolch llywydd, pa drafod eithem a Llywodraeth Cymru wedi cael gyda Garla yn dilyn i benderfyniad i gair safle'n Llandurnol? O yma, ysgrifennu y cabinet dros yn ni cynllunio am y materion gwledig wedi ysgrifennu at reolwr gyfarwyddwr arla i ofyn am gyfarfod bris i drafod unrhyw gyfleoedd y mae'r Cymru yn hysteriaid ac i weld sut y gallai Llywodraeth Cymru helpu. Wel, diolch i chi am y chateb. Dwi'n gwybod bod ni'n ddyddio cynnar, ond byddwn ni yn licio gofyn a fyddai'r Llywodraeth yn barod i ystyried maximeiddio potensial y safle yna drwy falle edrych ar ddenu eraill i ddod fewn i weithredu o'r safle yna yn y dyfodol. Oherwydd y gofyd yw, wrth gwrs, os oedd y safle'n cael ei mothbolio, mae'n cau pawb arall allan o safbwynt y cyfle i brosesu llaeth yn yr ardal yna. Dyn ni ddim eisiau sefyllfa fel welwyd yn hen digwyn yn ei orllewin Cymru mlyddodd yn ôl lle oedd safle yn wag a mlyddodd mawr a hynny yn ei drôn golygu bod dim posib prosesu llaeth yn yr ardal honno. A mae hynny'n bwysig, wrth gwrs, nid yn unig oherwydd bod ni angen capacity prosesu yng Nghymru a mae'r holl resymud wedi rhestru yn blaenorol yn ynghwestiwn i ysgrifennydd y Cabinet dros yr economi wrth os diwetha. Ond hefyd, wrth gwrs, mae'n amrwymiad gan arlar hyn o bryd i ddal i gymeryd llaeth gan y ffermwyr yn y gogledd ddwy rai. Ond wrth gwrs, am ba hyd y byddan nhw'n barod i drosglwyddo hwnna i'r Alban ac i ddyfnaint heb yn y pen draw benderfynu nad yw e yn gosteffeithio. O un diall bod yr ysgrifennydd cabinet wedi cael cyfarfod dros y ffôn hefyd pan hawl yma. Un o peth oedd yn cael ei ystyried oedd a pa gyfleo sydd i'r safle yn y pen draw. Mi'n cofio faint mor anodd oedd e i sicrhau bod y tir yn cael ei rhyddhau yn hendu gwyn. Mi'n cofio bod y gwnidog ar y pryd na sicrhau bod yn digwydd. Ond nhw'n rhoi bod wedi sefyll neu fel carreg fedd mewn ffordd. Am, am, am blyddoedd yn y, yn y, yn y, yn y dreia. Dwi'n ond yn rhywbeth y bod mwyn eisiau gweld yn cael ei ddatrys a hefyd y tir gael ei ddefnyddio am rhywbeth arall. So, felly, mae'n ddau beth yn gyntaf um, edrych ar gyfleoedd i'r, i'r safle ei hunan. Nag yn ail, wrth gwrs, i sicrhau bod yna gefnogaeth ar gael i'r bobl sydd yn gweithio yna, a beth hwnna ar gael, wrth gwrs, trwy'r cynllun react a hefyd mae busnes Cymru uh, yn gweithio gyda'r cwmni er mwyn gweld pan gyfleoedd sydd yn, yn y pen draw. Mark is short. Diolch, Diolch Llawydd. Last week, responding to me, the Cabinet Secretary um, told, referred to the Farmers Union of Wales uh, statement that Arla was set to retain the site while potential opportunities for other products uh, are resort explored and that he would be uh, taking that further with them. Um, I've since been told by one source that other opportunities for the site simply refer to recommencing production should tariffs be imposed on cheese imports uh, post-Brexit. But we also saw over the weekend reporting that Starbucks has struck a 21-year deal, uh, licensing deal with Arla to manufacture, distribute and market its range of premium ready-to-drink milk-based coffees across Europe, the Middle East and Asia, which potentially opens wider uh, opportunities. Um, so, so what, um, perhaps you won't be able to tell us until you've spoken to the Cabinet Secretary after his discussion, but will you inform uh, the Assembly um, whether uh, and what discussions have been had in that context and whether this is simply restricted to tariffs post-Brexit or whether there are new opportunities linked to the uh, publicised new contracts with, uh, with third parties? Well, it is early days yet, but certainly we will explore any uh, possibility that will lead to a positive outcome for the, uh, for the area, uh, and that is something the Cabinet Secretary will continue to, to do together with officials. Michelle Brown. Any officer, uh, First Minister, what uh, steps did Welsh Government take prior to the uh, Arla announcing the closure um, to try and convince them not to close the plant in Denbyshire? Well, these uh, announcements often come with, with uh, little or uh, no uh, warning. Uh, what we do, of course, in those circumstances is two things. First of all, to make sure that Business Wales uh, looks to discuss the future with the company uh, and secondly of course to provide support for affected employees including through the REACT scheme in order to help them to identify alternative sources of employment. It isn't always the case that where closures are announced or proposed because it is out of consultation at the moment uh, that we get uh, substantial or sometimes any notice. Question die, Jane Bryant. Diolch Llewydd. What is the Welsh Government doing to tackle alcohol abuse? We're investing almost 15 million a year in our substance misuse agenda, and within this, we're undertaking a range of actions to tackle alcohol abuse. 
That includes supporting services which are commissioned by area planning boards, and also, of course, uh, later this afternoon, uh, introducing the public health uh, minimum price for alcohol. Bill. Thank you, First Minister. Uh, last week, Gwent Police announced the introduction of a scheme where first-time offenders and low-level crimes, including drunk and disorderly, will be given the chance to attend a course rather than face court. The course will be offered to individuals at the discretion of the police and no cost to the public, rather like the speed awareness course. Gwent Police are the first force in Wales to offer such a scheme as part of their wider strategy to tackle alcohol problems, reduce reoffending, and ease pressure on the criminal justice system. Gwent Drug and Alcohol Service, a charity providing support and advice for individuals and families, have welcomed the scheme. Can the First Minister set out how the Welsh Government is supporting substance misuse services to increase awareness of the dangers of excessive alcohol consumption, and how will the Welsh Government work with the police and others to reduce alcohol-related crime? I think that's a very good idea. I mean, it, it, when I first started many years ago as a lawyer, it was often the case uh, that where we had two young men, it was inevitably young men, who might have been fighting with each other in drink uh, on the Kingsway in Swansea, which in those days was uh, quite, quite a venue for such things. Uh, if it was felt they wouldn't trouble the police or the courts again, they were often bound over, which meant they didn't have a criminal conviction. Uh, they were scared, frankly, and that, it scared them from coming back into, the, into court, and it was, in effect, a way of ensuring their, their good behaviour. This goes a step further. It helps people to understand the, um, the effects of alcohol uh, and alcohol abuse. In some ways, I support it's the extension of the speed awareness courses uh, that uh, uh, people, uh, not myself, I had, but some people have uh, found themselves uh, part of. It's a good way of educating people. If we can educate people out of behaviour, then that's better than punishing them without addressing the root cause of that behaviour. Mohammed Ashka. Presiding officer. In April, it was announced that an alcohol ban will be trialled in a section of the Principality Stadium for Wales, Autumn, Autumn Rugby Internationals. This follows complaint about the behaviour of drunk people spoiling games for other fans, which included a disabled person being subjected to a tirade of verbal abuse. Will the First Minister join me in welcoming this move to tackle alcohol abuse at Rugby Internationals? And will he be committed to discussing this with other sporting bodies with a view to extending the ban to other sports and venues where alcohol abuse is a problem in Wales. I think there are two issues here in, in, in the stadium. First of all, the behaviour of some support. I mean, drunkenness has, has been part of crowds for, for, for many, many decades. That's not an excuse, of course, for the way some people behave. If people behave in a way that is um, uh, obnoxious or breaches public order, then stewards should be informed and those people should be warned. And if they don't uh, take heed of the warning, removed from the, the ground. Second point is many people complain that they're up and down their feet all the time as people go back and forth to the bars uh, in order to buy, uh, to buy alcohol. It, it seems to me that people don't need to buy alcohol throughout the game uh, in order to, uh, to enjoy the game. And I think this is a, an important uh, pilot, if I can call it that, that's being uh, uh, pioneered in order to see what the, uh, what the effect will be. Can the First Minister confirm whether or not the Labour Party supports our membership of the European Economic Area? It is one option that we need to uh, look at, and that is something as a government uh, we have done. Uh, it's why I went to Norway, indeed, to see uh, how the situation in Norway worked. An interesting model, not one that fits Wales exactly, uh, but nevertheless, if Norway can uh, work to a, a model like that, then I see no, way, no reason why the UK can't construct its own model. We are running out of time, uh, First Minister, and you have uh, described Labour's position as flexible. Now, there's nothing flexible about £5 billion being wiped off the Welsh economy. There's nothing flexible about Welsh jobs and uh, wages disappearing and never returning. There's nothing flexible about rolling the dice on our biggest international market for agriculture, steel and over 60% of all Welsh exports. Even the joint white paper securing Wales' future states that the least damaging option for Wales is inside the European economic area. We co-authored that report on the understanding that you wanted to stand with us against an extreme Tory Brexit. Why are you abandoning your own analysis? And do you believe that your Westminster leader is right to clear the path 
for the Tories to pull us out of the single market. Well, look, I'm the First Minister of Wales. I'm not uh, responsible for what happens at Westminster. What I can say is this, our position has not changed. Uh, membership of the EEA uh, is an important option that needs to be kept open. What is absolutely uh, non-negotiable to my mind, and I know she'll agree with this, is that we need to stay within the customs union, uh, and secondly, of course, to have full and effective access to the single market. The position hasn't changed from when we uh, both authored that document. You are the First Minister uh, of Wales. You are also a member of the Labour Party, and I would imagine that you should have some uh, influence. Now, Plaid Cymru MPs will tomorrow vote to save jobs and our economy yeah, yeah. by staying in the European economic area. Unlike Labour, we will stand up to the Tories and give it our utmost to stop an extreme yeah. Tory Brexit that will be so disastrous for Wales. If you let your party drag us out of the single market, you will be ignoring your own white paper, your own experts, your own analysis. In fact, you'll be ignoring members of your own cabinet. Both the Labour MP for Pontypridd and your own Cabinet Secretary for Local Government put it perfectly when they said that Labour has created an open goal for the Tories and Wales will be damaged as a result. So what will it be, First Minister? Will you back the comments of the MP for Pontypridd and your Cabinet Secretary or will you continue to tow the London Labour line put in the interests of your own party before the interests of your own country. Yeah. Well, it's an extraordinary uh, comment because uh, in order to provide any evidence at all to back that up, she would have to show that somehow I have opposed membership of the EEA. I have not noticed the government. Secondly, that somehow I am opposed to remaining in the customs union, when in fact I would be one of his staunchest advocates because I know full well what would happen in Ireland if, uh, if that were to happen. Uh, thirdly, uh, as she will know, uh, I have always argued, as is she, for full and unfettered access to the single market. The Welsh Government's position has not changed and we will continue to make the case to those uh, elsewhere in the UK who are members of our party. But we are in government in Wales. Uh, our position is clear. Uh, the position has not changed when we authored the white uh, paper. And we make it absolutely clear. Wales' future belongs in the UK, which he does not believe. Secondly, within the, sing the uh, customs union, to my mind, within the single market as well, because that means full and fair access to the single market. Not within the EU, because people voted uh, for that not to happen. But it doesn't mean that we need to have a chaotic Brexit based on flag-waving nationalism, which is what some of the Conservative Party advocate, rather than a sensible, pragmatic Brexit that works for Wales. That's what we want, and I hope that's what she wants. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Uh, First Minister, last week the Chief Executive of Qatar Airlines uh, made some very uh, unhelpful and disparaging remarks about uh, whether a woman would be able to fulfil his role. You, as First Minister, have rightly identified that you as a government, and I'm sure everyone in this chamber, want Wales to be the most feminine-friendly country and allow pathways to every opportunity in Wales, irrespective of whatever sex you are. Uh, what representations did you make to the Chief Executive of Qatari Airlines about these comments, given that they are a strategic partner of yours, and not only that, you have put a lot of public money available to that airline to develop the routes into Cardiff Airport? Well, clearly, I don't agree with his, uh, his words. Uh, he is the chief executive of an airline, not uh, the head of a, of a government. Uh, we will continue to make the case, both within the UK and beyond, uh, to ensure that uh, equality becomes something that is entrenched in societies around the world. Sadly for that answer, First Minister, you give an indication that you made no representations whatsoever to the uh, Chief Executive or the airline about these remarks. Uh, if you were a small business in Wales uh, or medium-sized business in Wales, I'm sure that given the social contract that you've developed, uh, you would be obviously um, demonstrating your dislike of the comments that were made and with withdrawing that support from that small or medium-sized business. Another indication uh, of the double standard here in Wales is the report today around Pinewood. Uh, and the money that the Welsh Government made available to Pinewood uh, to develop the facility in St Melons. Uh, you talked of at the time in 2014 that there was the potential of £90 million to come into the Welsh economy. There was the potential for 2,000 jobs to be created uh, by this development. We know about 50 jobs have been created and at the moment there's a paper loss of about £9 million according to the Auditor General's figures. Uh, what's gone wrong, First Minister? 
Well, first of all, uh, around about uh, just over £4 million pounds has been recouped, but many projects are still in progress. You wouldn't expect the whole lot to be recouped in one fell swoop. These are long-term projects, uh, and the money is recouped over a longer period. I just wonder, I have some comments in front of me here, which I wonder if he agrees with. Uh, the addition of the globally recognised Pinewood Production Company to Wales' already rich film production industry is very welcome. An increasing number of blockbuster films are being shot at locations across Wales, and Pinewood's new base will offer even more opportunities to see Wales on film from which the whole country would benefit. Uh, this very welcome announcement is further evidence of Wales' growing reputation as an ideal venue for filmmakers with the right skills mixed to tantalise future cinema goers and movie fans. I agree with those comments. They came from his own party, Susie Davis. Comments were made in light of your assertion that this investment could bring in uh, 2,000 jobs, of which we know only 50 have been delivered, and potentially £90 million into the Welsh economy. Who wouldn't welcome such a proposition? But what we've seen with your management and your government's management of this particular bid is that we are, you have failed to deliver any one of those targets that you set in 2014. But the point that I identify Qatari Airlines, where you have said nothing, the point I identify with Pinewood, another big internationally recognised company, is if you're a small business in Wales and you look at these big companies getting the money and then you're discounted from accessing the support of Welsh Government because you've made such detestable comments in Qatari's case or Pinewood's overestimation of the gains to the Welsh economy, you'll be scratching your head today and asking, what is the Welsh Government for? Isn't it the case, isn't it the case, First Minister, that during your entire time as First Minister, you've promised much and delivered little? Unemployment, 4.4%. Yep, historically at a low level. Contrast that with the Tory years, when it was continuously in double figures. The destruction they wrought is there for all to see. Uh, we see a complete lack of ambition from the Conservative benches, Two bereft of ideas, no, no ambition for our country, not interested in uh, investment projects. Now he seems to be saying we should withdraw support from Qatar Airways. Yeah. Qatar yeah. Airways. So let that go, because they wanted to close the airport anyway. Let's be honest, they didn't care whether the airport uh, closed or not. And then jumped onto the bandwagon uh, when the airport started to be, uh, to be successful. And he accuses us of mismanagement. Have a look at the way you've dealt with the railways. Yeah. Have a look at the shambles you have made of the railways. It's, it's, it's a disgrace what the Tories have done to the railways. The money that's been hosed away, billions of pounds over the years on a service that is substandard. Contrast that with what we've done as a government, delivering the best railway service ever for the people of Wales over the next few years. You look at employment, you look at unemployment figures, how low they are. You look at the fact that we've had 30 years of foreign direct, uh, the best figures for 30 years of foreign direct investment. You look at the fact that we bought an airport in 2013, which he opposed. They wanted us not to buy the airport, they wanted to leave it closed. And now it's up by 50% in terms of passenger numbers. We have intercontinental links, and he accuses us of not doing enough for Wales. Have a good long look at yourselves and the destruction you've wrought as a party. Caroline Jones. Uh, First Minister, last week there were some comments in the media um, with regards to English prisoners in Welsh prisons. Normally I wouldn't raise this um, as a matter because the issue of prisons is not devolved to Wales. However, these comments allegedly came from a member of your government. The Cabinet Secretary for Local Government and Public Services is believed to have said the park prison in our region constituency um, should not be used to house English prisoners. First Minister, can you clarify your government's position on this issue? And do you believe that prisons in Wales should only house Welsh prisoners? Well, firstly, the, the Cabinet Secretary is clear that he did not say to use those uh, words. And secondly, well, no. I mean, clearly, it can't be the case that only Welsh prisoners can be in Welsh prisons because there are some prisons that don't exist in Wales that need to house Welsh prisons. Category A prisons, for example, we don't have a women's prison either. Uh, so we couldn't uh, create some kind of self-contained prison system under current uh, circumstances because that would mean uh, that would affect us more than anybody. Thank you for clarifying that, uh, First Minister. Um, as you have rightly said, we have no um, women's prison in Wales and not a single Category A prison. Um, in fact, the prisons are severely overcrowded in Wales. Wales has 4,747 prisoners and only across the five prisons um, has an operational capacity of 3,700. Um, so a large number of Welsh prisoners are incarcerated in Welsh prisons hundreds of miles from home. Um, and this is believed to be a significant factor in self-harm and suicide. So in your government submission, submission 
um, to the Commission of Justice. Um, you appear to be making the case for prisons to be devolved. Um, and is this the case? And if so, would a Welsh Government support um, building new prisons in Wales to relieve the overcrowding and the safety issue regarding staff, the self-harm of prisoners, and to house prisoners closer to home in relation to rehabilitation? Well, we do think the devolution of prisons along with the rest of the criminal justice system should be considered for devolution. It would take some time because uh, clearly we've had an integrated system within them for a long time. But it simply isn't enough for us to say, well, we will take control of the prisons and carry on with the same policy as before. Uh, there is an opportunity now for us to look at uh, a new system of penal policy and, uh, in order to make sure that we have a policy that's tailored uh, for the needs of Wales. And that, to my mind, includes looking at different types of prisons, uh, their sizes, uh, their success in terms of reforming prisons, and that's all part of the, that's an important part uh, of consideration of a, of a Welsh penal policy should prisons be devolved. Thank you for that, First Minister. I'm sure we can all agree that in the interest of safety of staff and prisoners regarding self-harm, that something does need to be done on the capacity of staff as well, for the staff to be increased in order to provide a safe environment um, and in order to help with rehabilitation and prevent reoffending. So, regardless of where the responsibilities over prisons lie, um, the Welsh Government has a role to play in the rehabilitation, as you've just said, um, and an effort through the, the provision of health services, education, housing and employment issues. So, First Minister, I am yet to be persuaded that there is a case for devolution of the justice system, prisons in particular, as I, as I don't believe we can go it alone. However, it is clear that there has to be greater cooperation between the Welsh Government and Westminster um, here. So what, what discussions have you had with the UK Government about improving access to rehabilitation services in Welsh prison and the impact of overcrowding, which eventually helps uh, AIDS reoffending? Um, so, regarding staff shortages and the impact on rehabilitation of prisoners, can you please um, answer those questions? Thank uh, you. Well, it, it is tricky because many services that are provided within prisons are devolved services. Uh, and it, 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 it's not the easiest fit to make with a, a non-devolved uh, service and a devolved service in order to provide those services. We've done it, uh, but you know, there will be easier ways of doing it. Well, she's just going it alone. I mean, Northern Ireland has a prison, prison system, so does Scotland. So, for that matter, there's Isle of Man uh, and Jersey and Guernsey. It's not entirely self contained, and there will always be, to my mind, a case uh, for some of the most dangerous prisoners to be housed in uh, one or two places, or three probably, around the whole of the UK, uh, rather than us doing it in Wales. We have to pay for those prison spaces, uh, but the number of offenders in uh, that category is actually quite low. Uh, so, it may well be that, that we, we may want, not want to pursue the, the option of a Category A prison in Wales. But there's no reason, in principle or in theory, why we couldn't run the justice system ourselves, given the fact that far smaller entities such as Northern Ireland have been doing it, well, nearly, for nearly 100 years. Turn to question three and all. Vashi, question Pedwar Paul Davis. How long have you been that can you add the word all Gwasanaeth the Yechid nor Shawin Cambri? I'm a board the Yechid people called Howell Da and Canal and Horiada Hinobid. And he'll can you only draw snow with Gwasanaeth the Kamini Dol Akaspatai and a God Shawin guy. I know in ruin see that the door devi Gamri Ran and Adam Horiad are doing barren. And when help you learn your Gwasanaeth the Ran Bath are given a devoted all. Prevenir dog to ensure that both him and my body on good to never be eaten again. Present all for the exit previous call. He will have got your both both pub in or three option. My board the exit in Kenya and Arwen at East Radio a special in Helix. It an honor by Neil. It will be doing a gun regionally. At the very end, Shani from Redderon, after Redderon, football Sir Benvro. But now them option and the Ramgan Horia David and Dio Gali was an eighth. And a special in Helig, Ak Adihi and Catino of Evo tried the Inru Bender Vignade, Ar the Vodol Guasanetha Yechid and Agorshawin, Parchi Barn a Bobol, Amar Guasanetha Hani, and Iwasanethi. I'm going to host Pussy, of course, board and Horiad Eang, Muna Widi Digwid, Lanin Aud, Matia Mambron Meal, now can't quit the Pedwar or questionnaires are lying with the Cal Igubul High, Tos Pim Cant or a true post. Uh, Mana Gavarodi, the Cumrid Lay, would he called um, Todd Parkes and Hobino Honino? And Bissing was Egoviot goes to, but, but, but uh, 
Bob, this will be the day and the dog when he can. Would he call the other plaggy get that or toy it? And that says our staff, our Bob was even from Goval, can recall where Clavion, he will have partner yet. No, so it will be good at Hollywood and it will be so the call is given any get that or it's just a man so it's a man. It's a plaggy gun, was in with on with Sanet Yechid. So Marvin Hot Pussy, Bob Ball and Wareran. Dwi'n ei mynegi barn, wrth gwrs, fe'n bydd ddim yn erbyn mi'n wneud hynny. Ond holl bwys i bobl yn mynegi barn yngliau pa fath o strwythu'r dylyfod yn gael llewyn yn y pen draw. Simon Thomas. Diolch llywydd. Byddwch chi'n ymwybodol fod am gynghofiad bwrdd i echyd hawl dda yn seiliedig a gwella gwasanaethau yn y gymuned. Mae hynny yn sail hefyd i'r cyhoeddi gan y Llywodwaith Cynnefach y wythos yma ynglyn â gofal a iechyd yn dod yn nes at ei gilydd. Ond y gwyddionydd yw bod pobl wedi clywed straeon fel hyn o'r blaen ac y gwyddionydd a law gwlad yw yr enghraifft fesur afos o bum lynedd a gyfym daintydd gwasanaeth iechyd yn deg cefedigion. Ffonio yn y bofe a gyfym meddyg faith yn cael ei defnyddio yn gyson iawn fel ffordd o fioli a dogni mynediad at gofal sylfaenol. Na fyddai naid mwy o sens bod y bwrdd iechyd y lai yn dangos i trigolion a hawl dda, bod nhw'n gallu gwneud y peth y sylfaenol am yn iawn, cyn dechrau sôn am peth o fel cestyll yn y awyr fel ysbyty newydd. O yna, dwi'n gwybod bod yn bod yn ysbyty newydd, maen nhw'n gweud o fewn yn gwyddor. Dwi'n gwybod yn gweld 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 yn Doctorate is not handy. You can get a good idea here. Man, a sound of the guard draws coming. So many people are in need now. So actually, do we should doctorate you now? Do we should make a guy you now? Because manu, well, as I wait, man, a sound of the guard draws coming. So the noise of the ebo ball in need a point yard. Our line, but you don't need any. Man, actually, phone a line in need a point yard, but you don't need any. Do we should doctorate you now? I'm not going to be the one who is going to be the the clever one. Lee Waters. Joyce Watson. Uh, uh, you will be aware, of course, uh, uh, First Minister, that there is a consultation that is ongoing and that it doesn't finish until uh, the 12th of July. And I did make a request here some uh, weeks ago about having additional um, opportunities for people to take part in that consultation, and Hewell Dyer Health Board uh, did respond. Uh, I hope that you would reiterate again, because it is a consultation, uh, nothing is fixed as yet, uh, to encourage people, whoever they are, and particularly uh, whatever their views are, so that they can be considered in the final document that will come out for consideration post-consultation. Uh, it's right to say that no decisions have been made. It is hugely important, as I said, that there is the fullest possible uh, consultation. Uh, I've not heard of any, of any complaints around the consultation itself, although, of course, there will be strong views of what the outcome uh, should be. Uh, and as I've said before, it's hugely important that the Health Board maximises all opportunities to engage with the public. Question Pimp, Beth and Syed. Will the first minute to provide an update on Natural Resources Wales's review into shooting on land that it manages? Yes, I, I can say to the member that NRW is still considering the responses from the consultation, and Welsh ministers will need to fully consider uh, any proposals that NRW produce. Thank you for the, that uh, reply. There's been um, understandable concern regarding the tender uh, for the review of evidence into our NRW's shooting review. I understand that only one application uh, was received, and one of the two academics employed to carry out the work is a self-admitted shooting enthusiast. Uh, I understand that NRW is, of course, uh, an arm's-length body, uh, but I and others have concern over the fairness um, of how this review um, has been conducted in light of that of which I've just uh, um, explained. Um, polling shows um, that there is a clear um, move uh, against having shooting on Welsh uh, Government uh, land. Uh, and I was wondering whether you would be committed in future um, such reviews to ensure that this is transparent and that people can hold the Government to account, because I feel uh, that it's failed in this regard, because people perhaps have not had the trust that they've wanted in this particular review uh, because of the potential conflict of interest uh, that one of the academics has. Uh, the member raises an issue which I'm not uh, aware. Can I ask the, the, the cabinet secretary then to write to her to provide her with the, the reassurance that she should that she would uh, need? Obviously, it's a matter that needs um, uh, addressing in more detail. Angela Burns. Uh, 
presiding officer. Um, First Minister, for my part, I'm quite relaxed about this because there were 19 experts involved in this uh, process on behalf of NRW, starting from the economist, senior statistician, wildlife management, and ortho their orthonologist, uh, woodland and spatial ecologist, recreation, health and wellbeing team leader. I won't read out all 19. Where I do have a real concern is I believe that NRW have probably reached a position that they've put forward that is based on expert advice and opinion. However, there is also a very large uh, petition that has been brought forward um, with a, um, a large number of signatures, a great number of whom appear to be from outside of Wales. So my question to you is this. Having had the first part of this consultation so rigorously put in place by NRW, are we able to apply the same rigour to those who might petition us from outside of our country as to what we should be doing in our country and on our land and by our people? Well, those are matters uh, really for the, uh, for the Commission uh, in terms of the petition uh, system. But I, I hear what she uh, says as far as we're concerned as government. Obviously, uh, NRW will be guided by its consultation and we, we are then guided by... Um, the views of, of NRW and, of course, looking at the uh, consultation itself. So uh, the petition system is one thing, but it's not formally part, of course, of government consultation. Vicky Howells. Sorry. Question where Jenny Rathbone. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Uh, what additional action will the Welsh Government take to tackle air pollution in Cardiff? Well, we've issued a direction to Cardiff Council requiring them to undertake a feasibility study to identify the option or options which will deliver compliance with the legal limits for nitrogen dioxide in the areas for which the authority is responsible in the shortest possible time. Um, clearly, this is a very serious matter uh, because we have the, the potential for further legal action uh, from in the High Court hanging over us if we are not seen to be addressing this major health problem as quickly as possible. Um, the the Keolis Amy uh, contract for delivering the rail and metro is extremely welcome. Yeah. The increased hi fi on the trains will uh, encourage more commuters to do the right thing and actually be working while they're travelling uh, rather than sitting in a car. And uh, the additional carriages and the additional frequency of trains is also very important to uh, get that modal shift that we need. Um, but I just wondered uh, what uh, work the Welsh Government's doing in conjunction with Transport for Wales to identify new tram routes to serve particularly east as well as south of Cardiff <laughs> which cannot benefit from upgrading of existing suburban rail lines. And additionally, what discussions have, has the government had with Cardiff Council on the possibility and the need for a congestion charge or a levy? Well, the matter of a congestion charge will be a matter for Cardiff Council. Uh, with the, the Metro, the, the fundamental principle of the Metro uh, that I wanted to ensure uh, was there was that it would be extendable. Uh, and that means, of course, the Metro had to, to look like other modes of transport, such as light rail, because light rail is far easier to extend than heavy rail. Um, and the first example of that will be the line down to the bay here in 2023, but there are other phases. The east of Cardiff is badly served uh, by the, uh, the rail network. Cardiff Parkway will improve the situation, but that's not enough of itself. Uh, in future phases of the Metro, there are plans to look at uh, light rail stroke tram. Uh, for the eastern part uh, of, uh, of Cardiff. I've seen the maps uh, to make sure that the, the gap that it does exist there uh, is filled in in the future. So the metro map as it is is not meant to be the fullest extent of its reach, but there will be the opportunity to extend the, um, the metro via light rail into parts of Cardiff that have been poorly served in the past. David Melding. Yes, the First Minister, many cities around the world are striving to become uh, uh, carbon neutral, some by as early as 2025, and this would obviously have a significant impact on, on air quality. The Mayor of Greater Manchester, Andy Burn Burnham, has brought forward their ta target for uh, carbon neutrality by a decade. Uh, we in the Welsh Conservatives have recognised uh, the need for greater ambition here and have called for Cardiff to be the first carbon neutral carbon, uh, capital city in the UK. I wonder if you share this type of ambition? Ambitious. I think it's something that is potentially uh, achievable, and I know that the uh, Cabinet Secretary will want to achieve uh, as, as well. 
Uh, we can't wait for the technology to deliver uh, the uh, reductions we, we seek uh, by themselves, but we do need to offer, of course, people uh, a comfortable, reasonably priced, frequent service that lures them away from their cars. And that's what the Metro is intended to, uh, to do, uh, to make sure that people don't feel that the only way into work for them is to travel by car. Simon Thomas. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. One of the reasons that Cardiff has suffered from poor air quality in the past and still does, according to recent uh, court cases, is major polluter, polluting plants uh, on the outskirts of Cardiff. Abathor, for example, has been taken to court on more than one occasion. Um, it's really important, I think, as we uh, develop our energy infrastructure, that we take the right tools, including environmental impact assessments, on any new developments. Uh, it's been of great concern for many in Wales that the Barry incinerator that was proposed and is still going ahead at the current time has not had a full environmental impact done on it. It's very difficult to judge the quality of air that will affect people in Barry and Cardiff if we don't do such an environmental impact. Now, I know the, minister, the Environment Minister is considering whether to order such a full environmental impact. Will you, as First Minister, ensure that that is done for both the residents of Barry and for Cardiff and for the wider South Wales area? Well, it is something that is under consideration, as the Member says, by the, the Ministers for her to, uh, to consider further. He is right to say that one of the things we need to do is to look at ways of uh, reducing the carbon footprint of uh, energy generation, which is why we need the Tidal Lagoon. Yeah, apparently, there was going to be an announcement yesterday. That's been delayed. Uh, allegedly, an announcement was the end of the week, if indeed the government is still in place at that point. Uh, still nothing. I mean, all we have, I mean, he agrees with this, I know, but all we have asked for is that Wales should be treated in the same way as Hinkley. We're not asking for more than that, uh, but you know, give us the same fair play, the same water take as Hinkley has had. Now, it's up to the Conservative Party uh, here in Wales and indeed in Westminster to show that they can deliver for Wales what they've already delivered to parts of England. That's their test. Can they show they're up to it? Question Scythe, Mike Hedges. Will the First Minister make a statement on efforts to tackle the problems caused by Japanese knotweed? We do work with uh, partner organisations and the public to tackle the threats of invasive non-native species in Wales. And I recognise that Japanese knotweed is a significant problem. We have uh, actively funded innovative trials. Uh, two things. First of all, chemical treatments. But secondly, uh, biocontrol through uh, using natural psyllid predators. Of course, you have to be careful doing that in case you introduce an even greater problem, as the Australians will tell you, some of the, what some of the things that they've done with uh, sugarcane particularly. Uh, but nevertheless, uh, those trials are ones that we have funded in order to get a grip to the problem. Uh, can I thank the First Minister for that response? Uh, not we really a serious problem in Swansea, especially in my constituency, but I'm sure Julie James could tell you exactly the same for Swansea West as well. Uh, uh, whilst the experiment with the natural predator and improved chemical treatments that will be welcomed, we have areas of green wedge where not weed has become a problem. Has the Welsh Government got any plans for stopping green wedge land becoming inf fully infested by knotweed, so instead of being a green belt, it will be a knotweed belt? Well, ultimately, of course, it is up to the landowner to control a Japanese knotweed on their, uh, their uh, land. Uh, I can say that we recently awarded uh, £50,000 to uh, five councils via the Green Infrastructure Funding uh, Scheme to undertake a project to combat invasive non-native plant species at over a thousand sites throughout the, the, uh, th those five uh, counties. Uh, it will also train community volunteers to help to control uh, those plants. And we did uh, recently publish an updated information sheet aimed at community and voluntary groups with advice on action on land they manage. Susie Davis. Uh, deal, Llywydd. Um, they say that uh, there are only certain things will survive a, a nuclear holocaust in this country, one being E. coli, and the second being cockroaches, and the third, the certainty that this question will keep coming up on the order paper in this place. Um, you may have heard recently that there have been some I uh, ideas that perhaps we should eat more uh, of this Japanese knotweed, as it's full of vitamins and minerals. We can't eat, you can't eat our way out of this problem, obviously. So my main question to you is, have you had any information from local authorities that there has been any illegal dumping of uh, Japanese knotweed in our landfill sites? Not that I'm aware of, but I'm sure that there are examples uh, uh, of it. Uh, I have not... That is a biocontrol method I've not heard proposed before. Uh, I, I wasn't aware the Japanese knot, knotweed was in fact edible. I, I suppose I should add the caveat, if anybody's watching this, that do not try this at home until it's been uh, fully, uh, fully tested, I, I'm told. Well, the, cabin, the leader of the house tells me it's quite horrible. I won't ask her whether that's personal experience or not, but uh, it's not a recommendation from, uh, from her. Uh, edible but horrible. So uh, that's the, uh, that is the government line uh, on, on, uh, on, on the consumption of, uh, of uh, Japanese uh, knotweed. Which, 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 there's an important point here. Knotweed 
is an incredibly invasive species, easy to move around. Uh, and, of course, it's hugely important that there are new ways sort to of control it, but also, of course, that any kind of illegality regarding its dumping is dealt with as quickly as possible. David Rowlands. Uh, well, it is a well-recognised uh, fact that Japanese uh, knotwood is one of the most pernicious plants ever to be introduced uh, to the British Isles. I understand that local councils have a duty to control knotwood infestations. As these infestations can blight private houses, it is essential that these controls are in place. And yet even a cursory observation of mostly urban uh, areas show that control measures seem not to be being applied. Would the First Minister consider reissuing guidance and perhaps a reminder to local councils of their duty in this regard? Well, I think I made reference just a little earlier to the guidance that we have uh, recently uh, provided, uh, updated, a guidance announcement I gave to the member for Swansea uh, East, that's aimed at community and voluntary groups, and that advises them on action uh, that they can take, and local authorities, of course, will be aware of any statutory responsibilities that they have. Question with Joyce Watson. Uh, Dale, what consideration does the Welsh Government give to the Trans-European Transport Network in developing its transport plans? Uh, well, our investment in the road network to meet European standards and our continued lobbying for UK Government to invest in our uh, 10T rail network demonstrates the importance we place on good transport connectivity with the rest of the UK and Europe. Uh, uh, thank you for that answer. But planning ahead, uh, there are examples of non-EU members being part of the 10T network uh, for example, Switzerland is. Is that something Cabinet has discussed in terms of post-Brexit planning? Because the extent to which uh, we coordinate with the EU on improvements to our major transport infrastructure, our roads, rails, airports and seaports, will have a huge bearing on economic activity uh, for decades to come. And Wales should look to maintain those bridges even if England is intent on burning them? The, the, the difficulty is geography, of course. I mean, we have to make sure that, um, that the network stays in place across the whole of Southern Britain particularly. You don't have to be an EU member uh, to be part of it. Switzerland is part of TNT, you know, and, and they're not an EU member. And, of course, the network links two EU members, uh, Ireland on the one hand, and um, the, the, the countries in the continent uh, on, on the other. So there's no reason at all, uh, rationally, why we shouldn't uh, form part of that network. Only, only the most blinkered Brexiteer and flag waver could, could possibly think that being part of an integrated programme to improve transport links is some kind of European plot. So there is no reason why we shouldn't stay part of this network. Russell George. Hi, yeah. Jock Flyer. Can I ask First Minister uh, how you are engaging with uh, the UK government in regards to these routes, as clearly as you just pointed out, this is a, a matter of, uh, that stretches across the border, and it's clear that important that both governments work together. It is, and we, we do when we can. I mean, in his constituency, of course, he, he will know uh, he is seeing the new town bypass being constructed as we, as we speak, which I, I know he's welcomed. He will have had the four crosses bypass as well. And then, of course, once through uh, Llanamanech, uh, the road starts to slow down, we're through Pant, into Shropshire and beyond. Uh, and it can be difficult to... Um, engage uh, the Department for Transport uh, so that they understand how important roads that seem peripheral to them are in fact to us and to the communities that live along those roads as well in, uh, in England. So we will always continue to work uh, with uh, government in England in order to make sure that our road network and indeed our rail network is as interconnected as possible. Question now, Lynn Neagle. Uh, will the First Minister provide an update on discussions with the UK Government on Brexit? Yes, we continue to use a range of channels for discussion, uh, notably the JMC plenary and European negotiations, EN. Uh, most recently, at political level, there was the first meeting of the Ministerial Forum on EU negotiations on the 24th of May. Thank you. I'm sure that the First Minister will have read with concerns uh, details of the UK Government's plans for a so-called doomsday Brexit, under which um, the second worst scenario of us leaving the EU without a deal would lead to the Port of Dover collapsing, uh, food shortages, fuel shortages and the NHS running out of medicines within two weeks. Um, can I ask the First Minister what discussions you've had with the 
the UK Government about these so-called doomsday plans. And given that the UK Government's handling of Brexit is becoming more shambolic by the minute, what assurances can you offer that we will not encounter disruption to key services like the NHS in Wales? The problem we have is that we don't have a sensible government in, uh, in London. We don't even have a government that is, that is absolutely determined on a hard Brexit and absolutely determined to, uh, take, to, to move it forward and come what may with a majority in Parliament. What we have is a mess, an absolute mess. David Davis returned from wherever he's been for the past few months to complain about uh, Northern Ireland. A resignation, resignation again this morning of a government minister in, in London, not happy with the direction that the, uh, the Tory government is, uh, is taking. You know, we have a Prime Minister who is in a position of grave weakness, who has to appeal for unity within her own party because of the, the backstabbing that's taking place. We have our own Foreign Secretary thinking that Donald Trump should need the negotiations and not his own party leader. Not his own party leader. I mean, you could not make this up. I mean, if I was a comedy writer, I mean, people would think this was too far-fetched. So we need something more sensible, certainly, in, uh, in, in London. There's no question about that because it's in no one's interest for this chaos to, uh, to continue. So we've made the point, rationally and calmly, that people's views have to be respected, the referendum result has to be respected, but it has to be done in the most sensible way possible. There are those who support Brexit who say, people voted in the referendum for the hardest Brexit possible. That's not what the election result last year taught us at all. People didn't vote for a hard Brexit. They were, they were offered the opportunity by Theresa May to vote for a hard Brexit, and they said no. And that is the reality of the democratic position. When I see newspapers in London saying this is some great betrayal, they forget the result last year yeah. and what people actually voted for last year. My belief is what people want is they want the result of the referendum be, to be respected and for Brexit to happen, but they want it to be done in the most sensible and rational way possible and not in a way that damages the UK. And I have to say, one of the things that troubles me is that I don't believe the ports are in any way ready. Uh, for, for a hard Brexit in March. We will then see delays at the ports. We will see lorries Dover, not just in Dover, potentially in the Welsh ports as well, lorries backed up down the, down the road, nowhere to park them, delays, goods going off, perishable goods. And what then will the UK government do? They'll blame the ports. They'll blame the ports. That's what they'll do. They'll say, well, Dover, it's your fault. You didn't invest properly. And it's not our fault. Gov, it's the fault of the ports. Or they'll come to us and say, the delays in Hollyhead and Pembroke Dock and Fishguard are your problem because the Welsh government controls the ports. Well, that's not good enough. I mean, if there's going to be planning for, for a, a hard Brexit, which is happening, and you know, in some ways you can understand why that's happening, you know, prepare for the worst, then there has to be money on the table to help our ports to deal with the inevitable consequences and delays that will actually occur. And that hasn't happened. Instead, what we're getting is nothing happening and the potential, I think, for ports to be told, any delays are your fault. Mark Reckless. Yeah, First Minister, for his, his statement. Of course, it would be for the UK government to decide what, if any, restrictions or customs it wanted to put or not put on goods coming into the, the country. But, First Minister, you made it clear earlier that your government still supports uh, staying in a customs union with the EU and staying in the single market. Previously, you have suggested you respect the referendum result and there shouldn't be a second referendum. However, you're no longer able to claim that that is the position of your government because you allow ministers to speak out and say that notwithstanding the vote of Wales and the UK in that referendum, we shouldn't have that and they should be made to vote again. Do you not understand that if the position is that there has to be another vote on any deal, all you do is incentivise the European Commission not to offer any attractive negotiating arrangement. Why does he hold, why does he hold the electors of Britain in such contempt? Yeah. People have decided what's going to happen. They have a, an equal say in how it's going to happen. Yeah. They're not excluded at that point. Thanks, you all voted, and from now on, you're an irrelevance. That's what he's saying to the people of Britain. Now, I don't advocate a second referendum on the issue. The referendum's been... His party did. His party did after the 97 referendum. They went into the general election in 2005 with a commitment for a second referendum on devolution. So they, they're bad losers. They're bad losers on that side. We accept the result that, was, uh, that, that, that we saw two years ago. But surely it is right that the people of Britain should decide how Brexit happens. It's not for the elites in the UK government to decide how it happens. It's for the people. And I don't see why there is such fear in Westminster, amongst the Conservative Party, of allowing people to say on how Brexit happens. People have decided the direction. They have every right to determine how the car is driven. Yeah.
Diolch i'r prifynidog. Yr eitem nesaf felly yw'r datganiad.